Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic to Gibson Road Friday night Bible class or Bible teaching. Welcome each and every one tonight. Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is great. And it is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Be thankful unto God and bless his holy name, for God is good, and his mercies endure it forever and ever. We're going to pray at this time and ask the Lord to be with us and that his presence uh, here with us tonight is, is, if he's not here with us, I've always said it, our coming would be in vain. But we thank the Lord for his goodness, grace, and mercy. And we are going to pray. And we want you to pray with me. Short prayer. Amen. And we ask the Lord for his blessings tonight. In Jesus name. Amen. Our Father. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The eternal God and our Savior. You who have bought us, dear God, with a price. It is you, Lord Jesus, that gave your life for us. You came all the way from glory because you loved us. And Lord Jesus, we are truly thankful at this moment. For it's a good thing to give thanks unto thee. And to show forth your loving kindness in the morning. And your faithfulness every night. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Lord, as we come at mercy seat, oh God, asking your presence to be with us. And what we're about to do tonight, Lord, we ask you, oh God Almighty, to anoint us for service. In the name of Jesus, let the words of our mouth, dear Lord, my God, be anointed from you. In the name of Jesus, open our spiritual ears tonight. Let us hear what the Spirit saying to the church. Bless your children, bless your people. Lord, each and every one of us. God, as you have allowed us the privilege tonight to come together in this fashion. We pray for the saints everywhere, wherever they are, locally and nationally, gathering together to hear the word of God. I pray a blessing upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear us, O oh Lord, as we pray for clarity and utterance be given tonight. We pray for interpretation and revelation. Your words, O oh God Almighty, for your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Bless us now, Lord, as we deliver everything into your hands, O oh God Almighty, as we look to thee, but there's none other help we have but you, and we don't need no other help but you, Lord, and we just want to say thank you for this grand and glorious privilege tonight for being together one more time in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you and welcome once again. Amen. And may the Lord keep you. Thank you for being, being here. God, Lord, allow it to come together in this fashion. Amen. You could be otherwise minded, but thank God that you have that desire and determination to hear, thus said the Lord. So tonight we are in the uh, book of uh, Genesis and St. Matthew. We are dealing with um, a topic here that came to me, uh, and I'm going to use it tonight. And it's taken from St. Matthew chapter 24, verses uh, 36 to 39. St. Matthew 24, verses 36, 39. And if you have your Bibles with you, amen, you could join me in this reading tonight. I will read and you can follow me to see. If I'm reading correctly, you'll be able to put the record straight tonight in Jesus' name. And after that, we're going over to Genesis chapter 6. Amen. So let us read uh, in Matthew 24, verse 36 to 39. It begins thus. But of that day and hour, no man knoweth. No, not the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of, of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, until that day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, 
and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's our reading portion in St. Matthew chapter uh, 24, 36 to 39. And the focus verse in St. Matthew 24, it's in verse, verse uh, 38. I'd like to uh, concentrate, meditate on verse 38. And we're speaking much from that verse tonight. And the verse reads again, focus verse is saying, for as in the days that were before the flood. So we are going to talk tonight about the days before the flood. Before the flood came, uh, in the days of Noah, we need to take a look to see what was happening during that time. That Jesus said, for is coming uh, for the church, there's things that we're going to get just and be just like it was in the days of Noah. So we are going to look at some of the things that was happening in the days of Noah before the flood. So we need now to go over to Genesis chapter uh, six. And there we're gonna have um, most of our teaching from, but the, the topic is we, we're dealing with, it was in the days of Noah before the flood, not during the flood, not after the flood, but before the flood. So we need to go over to Genesis chapter 6 and we will see what was going on um, before the flood. And Jesus says he's coming, that even when, he, when he'll be coming, we need to take a look and see what was happening uh, in Genesis chapter 6 before the flood. And he says, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. Here we have uh, Genesis chapter 6, and now we have looking towards the rapture and the tribulation. Happening, what's going to happen before the rapture takes place? See where we are in that in the New Testament. So here we have um, in the days of Noah before the flood, and here we are going to Genesis chapter 6 to take a look at a particular period of time, the behavior of mankind. How they used to deport themselves, the things that were happening, what caused God to bring a flood upon the earth. Amen. That was how the lifestyle of mankind was and how they were behaving. And the, the, the sin and their, um, their idolatry and misbehavior, amen, why God had to bring a flood and to get rid of uh, all mankind upon the earth. But we know the scripture tells us that when, when God made Adam, God gave Adam and told Adam that he need to be fruitful and multiply. So multiplication. God wanted a population, he wanted a people on this earth. He wanted the people to be his people. So he said to Adam when he made him, in chapter 1, verse 26 of the Genesis, God told him to be fruitful and multiply. So the Lord was looking for population growth. But we know the situation happened in the Garden of Eden and Adam was thrust out of the garden before he could start multiplying. When he went out of the garden, he still had to multiply and bring forth children. But instead of those children to be born with right and righteousness, they were born in sin. And uh, death was attached the human race and the human race becomes corrupted in a sinful nature. And so we have from Adam down to Noah. And from Adam down to Noah, there were 10 generations, 1,000 years. So you find out that Adam was the first man, and Adam and you know, Eve, they got Cain and Abel, and you know, and became a murderer. And Cain slew Abel, his brother. And then the Lord put another seed in Adam. And God, through his omnipotent, put another seed in Adam. And Adam then bring forth Set. Set means substitute. And then Set, we got Enos. And Enos, now the, the, the name Enos means mortal one. Now they realized that death was attached to them. So they became mortals. 
So uh, Enos means martyr. And they knew that they would die at some point. And even Methuselah that lived for 969 years, the Bible said he died. And even if the Bible did not say so, we know that he died. Why? Because in the Garden of Eden, the Lord God told Adam that in the day that he eateth thereof, the day, remember that word, the day he eateth thereof, he shall surely die. And you know, the day to the Lord is as a, a thousand years. In other words, no one would be able to live a thousand years. Anyhow, that Adam himself was made to live forever. But because of sin, in for death. The wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life. So here we have Adam. Amen. I and he died with Adam died within that day. Adam lived 935 minutes, could make a thousand years. So even Methuselah, the man that lived the longest on the planet. But to live 969 years. He thought probably he could have made it to the thousand, but the Bible said he would die within that day. And you know, the, the, the creative week, six days of creation, amen, and he died. So no man lives, amen, within that day of a thousand years. So let us move on here. So you have, amen, and, and Seth begot Enos and Canaan, Enos begot Canaan, and Canaan begot a man called Mahilia. Ahiliel begot Jared, and Jared now got a man called Enoch. We need to remember this man in our teaching tonight. Enoch, because Enoch walked with God when he was 225 years. The Bible said he went so far, stayed too late, and he never come back. So Enoch went away with God. Enoch never uh, see death. But before he, before he was taken, Enoch, Enoch had, a, had a, a son called uh, Methuselah, and he lived the longest. And Methuselah got a man called Lamech, and Lamech now got a man called Noah. But this man Noah was a special man because uh, when he was born, he was the one supposed to be, amen, bringing things, turning things around for Adam and the generation that followed him. So, but when he got down to him, he, he didn't do that. And so what happened? The, the old world be, became corrupted. So now in the days of Noah, amen, and then we're moving into chapter six of the Genesis. Remember now, we also have another generation, uh, descendants of people from Cain, and they were also on the planet. Not just the, the descendants of Seth, Adam to Seth, Canaan and Mahalia, down to Lamech, Noah, there was another side of people that was on this planet came to the language of Cain, a wicked line. So we got to understand where we are. Now, the Lord had told Adam that he needs to be fruitful and multiply. That's what needs to happen. Now the population growth is taking place. Now they got down to Noah and then chapter six, and that's where we're going to labor on tonight. Chapter 6 of the Genesis, and that's almost uh, a thousand years. Adam, Noah was now on the scene. But the Bible said, of Noah, and that's where we are today. He said, and it came to pass when men began to multiply. So the population growth going on, uh, because that was what God wanted mankind to do. He made Adam be fruitful and multiply. So here we have the population growth uh, going on here in Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born unto them. So male and female. In Genesis chapter 5, see the, there the genealogy record of Adam. And Adam had sons and daughters, so it was male and female, the population growth. And so that was what was going on. So it, it, things were happening, but something went wrong. And this is where we pick it up in chapter 6 of the Genesis. He said, it came to pass when men began to multiply. There was an increase in the population. 
uh, on the face of the earth. Daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God uh, saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all whom they choose. Now there was a problem here. And the Lord that said, my spirit, in verse 3, shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Make note of that number. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. This is what God said. Now, it, it, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always try with man. There was something wrong amen, with, the, with the wives which they choose. Because verse 2 tells us that the son of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they choose. Not what God had given to the sons of, of, of God. Now, the sons of God, remember now that the seed royal was the seed was running through uh Set and and um and Enos and Canaan and Mahilil and Jared. That was the, the lineage that God was struggling to. But then Cain, amen. Remember now, he killed his brother. And he was cursed, and he was sent, he was scattered, and he went abroad all over the face of the earth. Amen. Just like oh, Israel was was cursed and scattered because they killed their brother. Here we have a Cain killing his brother and became a father man. Amen. And wandered all over the earth. Now Cain began to have children. And you know that was there was a wicked lineage of Cain and daughters. What has happened here? The sons of God, and the sons of God is the lineage that was supposed to be kept clear that come all the way down to Noah. That was this, they were called the sons of God. Look at verse 2 again, he said that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They looked upon the daughters of Cain and that they were fair. But the sons of God shouldn't mix in with the daughters of the wicked line. God was not happy with that. So let's read verse 2 again. He said, the sons of God, the sons of God, was different from the sons of Cain. And the daughters of, 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 of Adam was, was different from the daughters of, of Cain. Now he said, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. They skip over to the other line, and they began to marry the daughters of the wicked lion of Cain. And the Lord said, the Lord had a complaint about that. This is what the Lord said in verse 3. My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now this begins to happen and happening before the flood. You have, you know, like we, let's simplify that a bit more, like we being the children of the Most High, we are the, uh, the church people, body of Christ, and yet we gone over outside to marry to the unsaved or the sinners. Now that can't work because light and darkness does not mix. So, and it can't work. So here we have, amen, sons of God, amen, going all over to the lineage of Cain, the wicked lineage, and taking up the daughters uh, of Cain and marrying them. And God says his spirit will not always strive with man because, uh, because it also is man is flesh. But yet his days shall be 120 years. So there was a, a limited time that was put on, 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 on man by 120 years. Uh, his days, look what he says, his days of man shall be 120 years. We need to remember that figure because we might get back to that to say something more about it. But the Bible said there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the son of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So they begin to mix in with the, with the ungodly line. Amen. And there we have manifestation of, of people that was 
not God's people. Amen. And the Lord, and they were wicked. And you know what Jesus said? What, uh, sorry, what God said in verse 6 came to pass when men began to multiply, and the face of the earth, daughters were born to them. But his spirit was not, will not always try with them. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness, because what they were doing was wickedness. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. All this was happening before the flood, before the tribulation, before the judgment came. Now Jesus referred back to this time. He said, Matthew 24, it says, as it was in the days of Noah, before the flood. So we are dealing with what's happening here before the flood, how man became wicked and disobedient to God and get mixed in with a wicked line, the sons of God. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Continued. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. There was no good thing going on in a man's heart there and then. No good thing. And the Lord saw that the thing with God, God is dealing with the heart. When he looks into the heart of mankind, it's every imagination of the heart was evil. How? Not there and but continually. Oh, no matter what age the individual would grow, and no matter how old they became, their imagination would be evil. So the Lord decided to stop this generation where it was, because he was looking for a population. I started with Adam, but Adam was driven out and gone, and the Lord gave him a, a start again uh, to produce children that he could sort of follow a line that Jesus Way down the line would have come to. Here we have um, Adam, descendant now, got so corrupt. And there was a covenant that God made with Adam. The covenant was in Genesis 3 15, that the seed of the woman was coming to bruise the head of the serpent, while the serpent was bruise the heel of, of, of the. So now we have the two seed was on, on its way coming. That's the seed of the serpent. And the seed of the woman. And you know that Jesus coming and the seed of the servant is the seed of the, of the devil. So here we have um, now reaching down to this point where the Lord decided to do something about mixing up uh, of the people during that time. Now the Lord wanted. Uh, a, a nation, I wanted a world that was populated. He wanted a people up on there. He wanted population growth, which was, he did get the growth, but the problem was that the people were corrupted. Amen, they were wicked, amen, and, and sinful. And God decided to do something. So he, gave, so he said here, and God saw, verse five, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. So from the baby was born all the way up, although it was innocent, he had a wicked heart. And the Lord knew that. And he said, every imagination, everything that they imagined to do of his heart was only evil continually. Not for a time, but all the through their lives, evil. Evil was always there. Corruption, evil, wickedness. And the Bible said, the Lord looked and it repented God. And, he, and it repented God that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. You know, God don't repent like a man repent. It's just when he looked at the human race, and what has happened to them. You know, God felt sorrow in his heart when he saw mankind. And he wished I don't, they would gone the other way, but they didn't. They went the way they did. You know, and the Lord looked at the sinfulness of man. And the Bible said he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. 
because it did not make man a man to be like that. He made Adam and Eve, he made them to live forever, sinless, amen. But because of one man's obedience, sin enters into the world and death by sin. So the Lord said, amen. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and he grieved him in his heart. And the Lord said, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created. The Lord decided that he's now he's going to destroy them because every imagination of the heart was evil, wickedness continually. No let up. They were getting worse and worse and worse. And all this going on was before the flood. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beasts, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. So the Lord looked at not just man, but he looked at the creation. And he knew that this creation that was so beautiful is going to destroy all the creeping things and animals and birds, the thing that was on the planet. So he was bringing everything under judgment. Everything was under judgment. But you know, the Lord never do anything and destroy. He always leave himself with a remnant. So the Lord decided, no, he's going to get rid of everything on this planet. And the creation would be upset with what, if you look at the destructions of the earth, destruction of the earth and the different continents and how things are, you imagine that things were never like that. Things were beautiful what God had made. But because of the judgment of the flood that God brought upon the earth, when you look at the earth, the earth needs to be renovated and that will happen in the time to come. But here we have, amen. The Bible said, and the Lord God said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things. And the falls of the hair, for it repenteth me that I have made him. All decision here that he's going to do something. But the Bible said, amidst all what was happening, God always have a remnant somewhere. What he said, but now found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, this man name pops up. Amen. And he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God's grace was upon him. Grace is the, this unmerited favor that Noah had received in the midst of such corruption and wickedness and, and evil. God still had a witness, and Noah was his witness. You know, beloved ones, if we look today, in our world, remember now, what's happening now before the rapture and before the tribulation comes. The evil that is going on in the world today, amen, not what they've been from now. That's why Jesus too told me that we'll refer back to now and say we need to take a look at what happened there and that's what's going on right now. Amen, right now on this planet that we are in. Evil has escalated, sin has increased. Amen, the bars of hell, amen, that open up the mouth. I mean, so many people is on the broad way. Thank God for the remnant that is on the narrow way. But there in a time, amen, when, amen, Jesus is about to come, amen. So he said, if we can look at what's happening, I did up in the days of Noah, before the flood, that's what we need to use as our measuring line, amen, to see and know that as it was then, so it is now. Peter, you read into 2 Peter chapter 3, it tells you the same thing, amen. And before the flood, Peter spoke out about this. And now we have a same thing that God said here, amen, as going to happen is happening, amen, because uh, it says, Noah, Found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, God always have somebody somewhere. 
you know, there's a remnant. I think it was when he made the, the, the darkest hour for Israel. And Elijah was on the move. And when Elijah destroyed the prophets of Baal and, and the prophets of Ahab, uh, then, you know, Jezebel decided to kill him. And he ran and hid himself in a cave and said the Lord, said to the Lord God, he want to die because he's the only one left. But the Lord tell him, no, you think you are the only one left, but God always have a remnant. God says, I have 7,000. Then hidden in cave. Eh? Remnant hidden that has not go to bear. So here we have in this particular period of, of time where God found, we had them. Uh, they know a phone place in the eyes of the Lord. They, so from coming through the, the lineage of Adam all the way down to, to um, Methuselah, Lamech, Lamech is Noah's father, amen, and then Noah, but you know, Lamech passed, passed away, he, he, he did not see the flood, amen, the Lord took him before the flood, leave the Noah, and Noah and his sons, Noah, his wife, and his three sons, and their wives, eight people. So out of the entire population, you can see there's only eight people that were saved. Out of the entire world, eight people. After a thousand years of uh, population, populating the earth, only eight people got saved. When they get to Sodom and Gomorrah, there was four that left. But it's only three because the wife of, of Lot, Look back at it. was only three that came up. You know, we have to consider here because we don't know, amen, who and how many will be going up in the rapture. Because it's very important that we examine ourselves to see if we are still in the field. Because our measuring uh, line is the word of God. You know, Israel was, uh, the plumb line was dropped on Israel and they were found wanted. But here we have uh, the word of God. We have to measure ourselves up with the word of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah. And said, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Just man and perfect in his generation. So in his generation, Noah was a just man. And Noah walked with God. Now the Bible tells us earlier on that Enoch walked with God. And now you find another man here walking with God, and this was Noah. But the Lord took Enoch, and now Noah had a job to do. Bible said here that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Walked with God. And Noah begot three sons. Shem, Am, and Japheth. Noah begat three sons. It was Noah and his three sons. And the, but the Bible says during that time, it just goes to show you, beloved ones, that we living in a time the wickedness is in this world. Trouble. All manner of evil going on in this world. But we have to remain in it. That's what happened. God needs us as his remnant. God needs us. Amen. Although the earth is corrupt, you know, when the Lord, uh, the church, you see, we are, we are in what you call the gap, you know, the gap is started from Pentecost. And the world had changed from Pentecost because the church was now on this planet. But the children of God, the church of God, the body of Christ, whenever we got sick, get saved, the Lord doesn't take us home to save that. That's just a job for us to do in this corrupt world corrupt and evil world because there are souls to be born, souls to be saved. So we can't just get the Holy Ghost and get home. Say, ah, we're going home to be with the Lord. We can't do it because we have a job to do. The commission that he has commissioned us is to go ye therefore, teach our nation, eh? commission us, baptize them in his name, and teaching them to observe all things. So we have a job to do. He has commissioned us and to do this. He has called us for that purpose. We are the called of God. And every one of us has got a calling on our life. Because the church of Jesus Christ, 
is the body of Christ. And we are members in particular. We have a job to do. Although all the influence of evil is all around us, although the corruption is going on, though the sinfulness around us. And uh, sometimes when we hear of it, you know, we wonder what kind of a world we live in. But God has deep people to be saved. I mean, there's souls to be saved for the kingdom. So we can't run away. We have to stay and fight. Stay and preach the gospel. We have to pray and teach the doctrine. Amen. And seek souls for the kingdom. Here we have the Bible said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation, but always of a man to win. Perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God, just like Enoch did. But the Lord took Enoch, but he had not taken Noah. He has not work for Noah to do. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Am, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Uh, well, you know, if you look at our world today, violence is everywhere. Corruption, killing, murder, you name it. Not just what mankind is doing, but the whole creation is groaning. Groaning, times and seasons. Talk about the climatic changes, amen, and the age that we are in. Amen, you see so many things going on around us, but we have to stay because God put us here. He puts his grace upon us. He gave us his word and his power. We have to preach the gospel. I think Paul says in Romans 1, 16, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Here we have Noah at a time when the whole world was filled with violence and, and corrupt. He says, and God looked up on the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Amen. Jesus said, go and check this out. He said, go and look what happened uh, in the days of Noah before the flood. All of these things were happening. It's happening in our time now. Corruption and violence. in the earth. Okay? All kind of movements going on. Terrorism uh, going on. Killings, drugs, you name it. Every evil work is going on. But thank God for the church. We have to remain in it. Because souls are still there to be saved. So the church is a city of refuge. At the moment in this planet. But we're not always going to be here. Amen. Because something is coming. That we can't get mixed up with. Amen. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. And... The Bible said, and God looked upon the earth, and the old it was corrupt, the earth was corrupt. For all flesh, not some, but all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth, except for Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. Noah, eight souls out of the entire population of a thousand years of, of population upon the earth. Only eight people was there. And the Bible said, and God said unto Noah, now God speak. God is going to speak. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. God said the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled. He so many times God says, so many times he reminds them about this. I know he's saying, Jesus said, go back and take a look. Yeah. That's how it was before the flood was. Bible said, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So the Lord had planned is going to destroy man, beast, everything on this planet in the earth, with the earth. So the earth was also in trouble, because once judgment hits this earth, and right now the earth is under judgment. The Lord that was here is still spreading the good news. Eh? So we find favor eh? and grace is upon us as we go along preaching the gospel. And Noah did. So he said to Noah, so the Lord said, make me an ark of go for wood. Make me an ark of go for wood. Now, the Lord told Noah that. Wood, and he told him that the dimensions 
He said, whom shall thou make it the heart and shall pitch it within and without with pitch? Now the Lord had not told Noah what and what. He only gave him some information. And he told Noah what he has to do. Noah obeyed what God said. He was so obedient. Never questioned God. He just continued to do as he was commanded. And the Lord said, make thee and hark up, go forward. Room shall thou make it. The ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Both sides, in and out. To make sure that it is secure. And this is the fashion the Lord now gave him, the fashion which thou shalt make it. What about the length of the ark? Shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it, 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. That was the, the, the fashion of the ark. Three story. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it. Um, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower second and third stories shall thou make it. So here we have the dimensions of the ark, the material that should be used, how it should be, or how Noah should make it. Noah did not fashion this ark his own idea, say he's going to make this now and God has to put up with this. No, he followed instruction. He followed what God said, and he had the pattern, how to do it, how to build it. Anyhow, Noah had built it one inch different from what God said. It would have drowned him and his family. But Noah built it for the saving of his house. And when you, God has given us anything to do, we have to build according to specification. He told Moses when he built the tabernacle, he said, build it according to the pattern I showed thee in the Holy Mount. Beloved ones, you and I are building to pattern. Today, we find that, amen, if we go back and take a look in Genesis 6, we see that Noah built according to pattern and instruction. We are the children of God. We have to build according to pattern. Amen, because the Bible tells us how we need to deport ourselves, how we need to live, how we need to behave. Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and our song. Everything about us, amen, we have to build according to our role model. Our model is Jesus. And every one of us has got to build according to Jesus Christ, who is the pattern for us. He came and set the pattern. Anything outside of the pattern we're trying to build, we are heading in the wrong direction. And the Spirit of God will not strive with us. If we build according to pattern, according to the word of God, and that is the pattern. That's how we have to build. Because he lay, he came and he laid the foundation. He opened wide the door. He said, this foundation is built upon the prophets and the apostles. Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone and the lively stone, built up into a spiritual home. Here we have now with this specification and the fashion we need to build this. And anyhow, we had built it differently. It would have this him and his family. It says, a window thou shalt make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower sec and second, third for it, shall thou make it. Let me just pause a little bit here. Now, this, this ark is a three-story building, three-story boat, three-story ship. Want to call it like that? This ark was a ship, three story. And you know, man is a tripod being, body, soul, and spirit. Now, this ark was built according to God. God said it must be fashioned. Now, it had got to be made out of gopher wood. Now, the wood that, that made this ark was not any wood. You know, because Noah had to prepare this ark according to the wood that would have saved them, this, this three-story building or ark, whatever it is, um, a ship. You know, you know when, when, when Jesus was coming here and he said to Mary, he said, the body shall 
He just said, it's a beyond I come in the volume of the book. A body shall go prepare me. Now I had to prepare this thing according to instructions and specification. He couldn't use no other word. If he had used any other word, then you know he would be in trouble. It would have his, his, him and his family would be destroyed. But he had to use go forward. And that's what the Lord said. No, the Lord said he need to pick it within and without. Instructions he had to follow. He had to pitch it. Now he said, a, a door, just one door, you have to put in the side of the ship. Of this house. One door and one window. One window. And the window was up, way up. And he told the window was there. Amen. Then the side, the door was side, at the side of, the, of, of this ship. And you know, when you begin to look at Jesus, and you begin to see Calvary, you begin to look at the church, you begin to see things here, a eh? uh, typology of things here, of the church. You know, Jesus Christ himself, when he was on Calvary, you know, that the wooden cross, that was an altar for him. But when they pierced his side, out of his side came the church. Amen. When the soldiers, and he gave, his, gave up the ghost and the cross, and then when the, the legs of the other two, these were broken. When they came to break his leg, he was already dead. And then a soldier took a, a, a spear and pierced his side and cut his side and all came off his, out of his side. Door was open and then blood and water came out. What came out of his side of this church of Jesus Christ? So then you notice that there was a door on the side of the arm. There was one window. Now, what entrance is? To get to God, there's only one way. You can't get to God no other way beside to Jesus Christ. So this one door that was in uh, the side of the heart, and you had to put it in, and the, that, and the wind had to be finished at the top, it meant to give light in there. And then it was a three story. You have a lower, middle, and an upper. Like a man, body, soul, and spirit. Like a type of being. So the Bible said, and it's done this thing it now, the Lord now was going to tell, um, once he built it, the Lord was now going to tell um, Noah what he's going to do. Because all the while, you see, God was speaking to him and telling him to do this and to do that and to do this, and he was obeying it and doing it. And now the Lord is going to tell him something. What? The reasons for all of these things. Verse 17. And he says, And behold, I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. Is now he knew what he was building this great ship for. God says, Now even, now behold, I even I do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy our flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. So now he's revealing things to Noah that Noah just about hearing. Now he said, But with thee, God said, But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. So the Lord had told him going to happen. Now, and he told Noah that his son, his wife and his son, and his son's wife, shall come into the ark. Noah and his family. Now, and he said in verse 18, but with thee I have established my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wives with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee, they shall be male and female. Very important. That needs to be broadcast all over the world today. That Noah had to bring them in male and female. You know why? For procreation. That they have to multiply. 
You know, it said male and female. God was specific about this. Didn't say bring in males, males, males. It said bring in male and female. And it said of the fowls after their kind and of cattle after their kind, every creeping thing of, on the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee and keep them alive. Two of every sort, male and female. Now, when it comes down to Noah, Noah, his wife, male and female, his sons and their wives, male and female. There was not a hard person in there. Everybody had a wife, all the men had a wife, and all the wife had a husband. And they were in the ark. There was no hard person in there, no single person in there. They were male and female. We need to take note of that. He says, and take thou unto thee of all food, to bring food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for all of them. So now I had to prepare food to feed and keep them alive while they were in the ark. Because this flood was going to create um, a situation where food would not be able, they couldn't go outside and, get and look for food. Because water would be on the outside. But the Bible said, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Now you see the importance, beloved ones. He did all that God had commanded him. Anyhow, that he had decided that the, the, we know we don't have to do this. He doesn't have to do that. You know why God wants this here. Even if his sons had put something wrong, he said, no, you can't put it there. You can't put this here. Come on, son, you can't put that there because God has said this is the way. So it is without us, beloved ones, with our salvation. We can build our salvation. We want to build. We have to do the things according to what God has said. It is him that purchased us with his own blood. He's the one that set the guidelines for us. He's the one that set the word of God for us to obey. Amen. Not our own. We belong to him. But today, you know, you find that there's someone to, amen, to let to tell God what to do. No, we can't tell God what to do. God tells us what we need to do. Amen. And there's so many different kind of reasoning and thinking today. Some push the Bible one side, which is the instruction that we need to have. Okay? But they are using their own initiative, and their own mind, and their own way of thinking and trying to build God's church. But we can't build that church like that. God's church has to be built according to God's um, fashion and according to God's word. This is how God's church must be built. Can't be built any other build any other way. So the Bible said here in verse 22, thus did Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So did he. So now everything was set. And the Lord said unto Noah, come thou in. Now, if you notice here, the ark was now, the flood has not started yet. Let's see what God did. He called, God went in first. He went in. No, the ark was finished. God went in first. And when God went, went in first, the animals were in. But God said to Noah, Come thou in and all thy house unto the ark, into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. But God went in first and sat in the ark. And then the Lord called Noah in. You know how I know that? Because if you are outside, you could say, Noah, go in. But you said to Noah, come in. And to say, come in, that means God was already inside. And then he called Noah in and said, you are the only one in your family that I found righteous. Righteous before me in this generation. Now, and then he went on to say, of every king beast, Thou shalt take to thee my seven. Now, in the in the early stage when Noah preaching, God told him that he should get all animals and beasts two by two, clean beasts by two, or and and, and the, 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 the a beast that is unclean by two. But now a hundred years had passed. Over a hundred years had passed. Noah had been preaching for 120 years. But see what God said to him. Now God went into the ark, 
He says, of every clean beast, thou shalt take of thee by seven. Now he said, because the room in the ark was not occupied, because it was there for people, it was there for men. Amen. That Noah could, be, could, could convert them. But now nobody got saved. Now Noah was preaching for 120 years. Noah was preaching the same message every day while he was building the ark. And his message only had four words. It is going to rain. So they mocked him and they jeered him. And they called him all kind of said, oh, hear that old fool again. But every day Noah keep, he keep on knocking, he keep on nailing, he keep on building with his sons. And I'm sure the wife helped them. Uh, bring food and feed them while they were building the ark for 120 years. 120 years. And now, because no one got saved, only Noah and his family, there were room in there for people, but then the Lord said to him, what you can do now to occupy the space in the ark, he says, of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee more by sevens. Increase the amount of clean beasts and bring them in by sevens. He said, the man, and you know this here, the Lord insists again, and he reiterates again, he said, the male and the female. God keep on insisting that the male and the female goes in. And of the beasts that are not clean, only by two. And the unclean beast must only come by two, not by sevens. And he went on to say the male and his female. God, this was a, a strict instruction from God. You can only bring the male and the female. And all that was to do was for procreation. Right? It says, a folds also of the year by sevens, the male and the female. So verse two and three. Uh, here he's saying, a folds also of the year by sevens and male and female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. Because multiplication can only go between the male and the female. The Lord never, ever mentioned anything about bringing two females or two males. He said the male and the female, both clean beasts, unclean beasts, and both man, male and the female. God was quite strong by saying this they could understand what he was saying. And now, no one's gonna know when the rain gonna start. And he was inside. And the Lord had him in. So here the Lord said, yet seven days. So they were in there for seven days and there were no rain. But they were already shutting the ark. Because the rain was gonna come. And the water upon the earth. I want you to see this now. The preaching of Noah. Eh, before the flood. The flood won't come yet. But the preaching stop. And now they're gone in. And the flood is going to come. Now we have to understand the church that we are in at this time. The church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. We are preaching in a world of corruption and violence all around. Sin is everywhere. Oh, we have to preach. But as Noah was taken in the ark, and the ark was a type of Jesus. Amen. The, the type of the church, the body of Christ. Noah went in and was locked in by God for seven days first. Seven days. The people that was around Noah didn't even know where he got. He was just taken away from the people, locked into the ark by God. And I believe that when God went in and Noah came in and all the animals, the, the door lock that Noah had put on, God had changed that. And God had put a lock on the door himself that nobody opens it. For what? You see, if God shut the door, nobody can um, open it. And if God opened the door, nobody can shut it. So if God is going to change that now because Noah, when that flood started, Noah would have opened it. I remember, Noah had sisters and brothers in him. And they had children. Hey, and all of them was over there. So while Noah was building, they were not taking any notice of Noah, but Noah was building. 
And as Noah got building, they jeered him, they mocked him, all the people around. No one would take heed unto the preaching. Now the thing about the rain, the message was it's going to rain. It is going to rain. They have never seen rain before. This is where it comes now. You see, because when the Lord made the creation and created, he caused a mist to come up in the earth and water the, 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 the earth. That rain coming down. They never seen rain, but they have seen mists. So they never had the experience of rain. But now our message was, it's going to rain. Eh? No, Jesus, no God said, not God is inside, sitting down in the ark. And God said to Noah, because the people must have wondered where Noah is with his family. Am I gone on some holiday or something? Because he was missing from amongst the community. Remember the armoring stuff, the noise stuff, the building stuff. It was completed. Everything was done. And God locked Noah. And you know this, and I tell you something. When the tribulation when it happened, the church has got to be taken away to heaven. And all of the saints gone to heaven for seven years. But you know this, it was seven years. Type of seven years, all the typology here. So if you look at verse, Oh, you know what God said to know? For yet seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy off the face of the earth. But what we what we're seeing here is that the church is going to leave this planet. We will not be here. I mean, we're going to be up in heaven for seven years. Yet Noah was in with God type seven days. And Lord, the Lord locked him into the ark with himself and was in there before the rain started. So now the church has got to go away. Then the tribulation started. But the, the ark was a type of Christ. Okay? Type of the body of Christ. One thing also we need to understand about that. Everybody that was, you know, people don't, some don't believe that the name of Jesus is so important. Name. Everybody in that ark, name was Noah. Nobody in there had another name besides Noah. It was Noah, the name they're going by. You remember when Moses bringing the children from, from Egypt, and when they came to the Red Sea, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 10, they were baptized unto Moses. Why? They need a name. The people today who say they are Christian or they are religious or what, baptizing titles. No, there are many fathers, son, that was out there in the, in, in the community of nowadays. Many fathers and sons that was out there. But the name Noah brought them inside the ark, and only Noah and his son with the same name. So the importance of it going to heaven, we all have to have the same name. That's why baptism in Jesus' name is a must. That'll be a must. Everybody has got to have the same name. But you do have some of our people don't even get the revelation of that yet. And they still believe that you can go to heaven with the titles. No, you need to have the name. We need to have the name. Without the name of Jesus Christ, we, we can't make it. Inside there, everybody's name was Noah. Nobody had a different name. Noah. Everybody's name was Noah. While you were in that ark. So to go to heaven, everybody has to have Jesus' name. It's a must. Baptism in Jesus' name. And like I mentioned, when the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, when they crossed the Red Sea, baptism, like when they baptism, the Bible said they were baptized unto Moses. Why Moses? Moses is a type of Christ. And they couldn't come out with a name. It was a name. Of course they came out. But they came out with Moses. He need to get to heaven. And we need to be up there for seven years. Yeah. Seven years before we come back to this earth. Yeah. So you don't know, you're up there. Then hear what God said. You know, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. 
of the face of the earth. And Noah did, look what this Bible said. And verse eight, verse five, look at the verse five. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Beloved ones, we have to do according to everything that the Lord God commanded us. I have said that Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. We have got to do everything that Jesus commanded us. Instead of that, we'll never be able to make, make rapture. We'll be stuck in the tribulation. Just like all oh, our sisters and brothers and the community. We're going to get stuck outside. We couldn't get into the ark anymore. Noah and was shut in with God. And no matter what happened, there was only one door. And that door, remember, the cross, Jesus' side, that was the door. And you notice Noah only had one window to look out because he couldn't look out, you know. He look up. So while he was in that ark with the one window, he to look up. So while the deluge and the things were going on outside and all the rain and everything was happening, Noah couldn't look out. Noah could look up. But the window was up at the very top. The window was there. And for seven days, Noah was in there with God's presence and the animals. And the people outside, the very animals was inside the ark. The ark, the ark was built for people. And it took Noah 120 years. And the people was outside. Now verse 6 says, And Noah was 600 years Old when the flood of water was upon the earth. Noah was 600 years old. Okay? And Noah went in, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons, uh, wives with them, him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So Noah was inside, his wife was inside. You know, there's no hard person was in there, only wives and husbands in there. Hard person was in there. And the Lord was very strong in writing here and letting us know that male and female created in them. Yeah? So, this big, massive confusion in the world today, even big mix up, that's confusion yeah? in this world. And that's what's happening in the days of now. Sin, violence, wickedness, everything was going on. But Noah kept on building. It was finished and now he was inside, locked in with God. So the rapture is going to come, beloved man. We just got to continue. Do everything that Jesus said we need to do. And when he takes us, when the rapture comes, we're going to be locked in with God for seven years up in heaven. For seven days, Noah was locked in here. Amen. Seven days. Yeah. So let's read some more. And Noah went in and his sons, and his wife, and his sons, wives with him, into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. All that was, all those things came into the ark, and man was on the outside. Mankind was outside. But the Bible teaches us, knowing the terror of God, we must persuade men to come. And we were preaching us a long time. Oh, Noah preached 120 years. 120 years. Yet, the church is preached, and Noah only could be eight people. Eight people! Now the church is preaching now over 2,021 years. And people are still being saved. But we, when the recording day come, when we all are going to get together, then we we'll know each other better. Okay? So we have to try and work our way through to him. Use the word of God as our guidelines and do what God said. No one did everything that God commanded him. We have to do everything that Jesus Christ has commanded us. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandment. If we love him. Oh, it's a lot of people say we love him, but we don't do what he says. So it's only coming from the mouth. Let us be true. Genuine Christians. The Father seeketh such as the Bible said, God is a spirit, John 4, 24. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
For the Father seeketh such to worship him. All is their spirit. So here we have. They went in two by two. Unto Noah. They came unto Noah. Into the ark. The male and the female. As God has commanded Noah. Don't bring a hard one in. Bring them in two by two. A male and a female. I can't really um, say it any stronger than I'm saying it now. The world need to understand this. Male and female created it then. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. After seven days. So God only told Noah we didn't going to do it when they were in the ark. Now, if Noah, if he had told Noah that before, Noah would have gone and tell everybody who said, you need to get in your quick. Because the waters are coming in seven days' time. Same it is now. It's Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. Not only the Son of Man, not neither the Son of Man, only my Father which is in them. So we don't know the day nor the hour. And the Lord don't tell us the day. No, I didn't know it. It went nowhere. I think the Lord told him he had seven years. He's going to do it. We don't know, but we have to prepare ourselves eh, and keep the commandments of Jesus Christ as Noah kept the commandment of God and build according to pattern. You notice that, that the ark, the, the Bible said you have to pitch it within and without. Eh? Pitch it within and without because water would have seeped in. They want to secure the ark. What we're really talking about? Our lifestyle. Yeah, you know, some people say, well, God, God is not looking at your outside. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart and your outside. Because I'll tell you something. If the heart is right, outside will become right. And if the outside is not right, you know that inside is not right. So you have to pitch it. The believer today has to pitch it. Our lifestyle, eh, the way we live, the things we do, pitch it within and without. Do it according to the pattern. We have a build according to the pattern. It's a pattern in this Bible where the believer, amen, has to live by. We has to do. This constitution in this Bible is our direction for him. And anyhow, we sidestep anything in there, we're going to be in trouble. If Noah had not built according to specification, he and his family would have drunk. But he built it to save his family. You and I need to build to save ourselves and help others. Encourage them to build right. If you see your brothers, your sisters, and your, your family but saved, doing the wrong thing, say, hey, never make him like that. You have to build it according to specification, according to the commandment of Jesus. So we build. And build it well and build it true. So here we have Noah. Noah. And the Bible said, that Noah, let me get that here. Uh, he said, in, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters was of the flood was upon the earth. In the 600 years, here's the date now. Here is the time. You notice that Noah going to know the date and it's written and recorded in the Bible when the flood was going to take place. But the only time we know that is after the event. So he said, in the 600 years of Noah's life, in the second month and the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Judgment was upon the earth. Mercy door has shut because from God locked that door at the side of the ship of the ark. No one else could get in. Everybody else was shut out. But Noah was shut in with he, he and his family. Amen. And the animals that was in there with him. We mankind should have had amen, their position in their uh, beasts, clean beasts and clean animals occupied it. And mankind was outside. Uh, judgment. So the Bible said, and the rain was upon the earth. 40 days and 40 nights. So there was a date. 
You know, Jesus said, eight minutes coming. No man knows that. Amen. But as it was in the days of Noah, that before the flood, we shall look at ourselves now. Amen. And where we are now, because the rapture is the next step. The next move of God is the rapture of the church. So we can't afford to just live as if we have all the time in the world. And we just keep going and doing what we feel like doing. I believe what God has to put up with God, we have to put up with nothing. We have to put up with him, God. Right? But he has set the guidelines for us. And God is so patient. He's long-suffering, plenteous in mercy. Not always child. As a father pities the children, so the Lord pities them that fear. The Lord is willing to save all of us, but it's up to us. As, and when that day comes, and when I consider Noah, sisters and brothers, my family, you read the text, you see that lamech of children beside Noah, daughters and everything. They were outside there and Noah was inside because Noah believed God. And God's informed grace in the sight of God. And because of that, and his children obey him. You know, but we pray to God for the children of the saints who have got children, these saved saints have got children who are not yet saved. But we pray for them, you know, that they get in quick before the rain starts to fall. So he said, the fountain of the deep of both. So three things happen. Three things happened. The 600 year of Noah's life, and the 17th day of the second month. You know what 17 means? Resurrection. Because Jesus Christ, remember, he was put in the tomb. And when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, it was on the 17th day of the, of the month of Abib. 17th day, Jesus rose. So here we have the heart lift off from the earth on the 17th day of the second month. Resurrection. Right? Remember that. Check it out. All right. So he said, three things happened. The fountains of the deep were broken up. The heavens were open and it began to rain. So why the heavens open? In Genesis chapter one, when the Lord divided the waters from the waters, he put the waters above the heavens. That's okay. And then the waters that was down the the seas. But under the earth, we have the, 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 the plates under the earth where the water is, and that's radiation, radioactive water that's under there. So when that burst the earth and came up, you notice that water can come up half a million year. What? So the water was coming up from under the earth, coming down from the heavens, and it started to rain. And then the people who had never seen rain before. First time they're going to see rain and so they want to plan it. Oh, we're going to do our crops and plant, plant our vineyards and do this. But suddenly, they began to see the water not going into the earth, but the water began to remain on top of the earth. Then they moved from the ankle, then to their knee, then to their, to their hip, to their waist, then to their neck. They begin to climb trees. To climb mountain, they began to knock on Noah. Father Noah, Father Noah, open unto us. Like I said, God locked that door because mercy, mercy was now gone. Amen. The door was locked by God Himself. And whatsoever He shot, no man opened. And I know Noah would have gone and opened. Keep knocking on Father, Father Noah, open unto us. And so they tried to climb up on the ark. But you notice when the Lord made this ark to know how to build it, now what did was wondering, why would I have a ship? Where is it going? You know, where is it going to sail to? Where is it? But the ship was not made to sail uh, and compass uh, north, south, east, or west. The ship was going to go up. So it began to ride the waves and go up to heaven and go up. Every time that the deluge and the, the storms and the, and the water and the Everything was going on out there. It was hell out there. And what happened? The hawk with Noah him just ride the waves. Ride the waves. And he rides the wave. Everything was getting the big cats were dying first. And everything died. Everything on this planet died. And you know when the archaeologists, when they 
when they when they dig up and to find fossils that's under the, under there, when they look at the fish, the very fish had his mouth wide open, in for breath. Why? Because when the rain came down and the water mixes with the earth, what you have is mud and slush. It's what you have there. They said no swimming can take place. Everything was going to die. But the Lord said, going to destroy everything. I will keep it up on the earth. I will destroy. God, they couldn't swim in the mud. There was water mixed with mud. And they find man at the top. The archaeologists, they find men at the top because men try to get to the highest point. But when the hawk went up, the hawk went up and the hawk. Uh, went up above all the mountains. It was a universal disaster. It was a universal flood. And the ark went up over the highest mountain. And the rest of it is called Mountain called Arar. You know, if you go around there, you see this mountain that was around here at Ararat. You see one of the greatest phenomenon to look at. Uh, this um, Mount Ararat, where the ark rested. And everything has died. Noah and his sons and his wife got saved in the ark with animals. But God did not get saved. Why? Because Noah, the message of Noah was not only preached by Noah. Because when Enoch left, Enoch is also a type of the church. The, the flooding and the water upon the earth was a type of the great tribulation. You notice that Enoch left before that happened. And the Bible said Enoch walked with God. Enoch was a man that feared God, so the Lord took him. So what's going to happen with us also? Same as if Noah was brought inside the ark, what's going to happen to us? We're going to leave before the tribulation. We don't belong to the tribulation. Tribulation can't come into the churches raptured first. Notice that Noah went in for seven days, then the tribulation hit. Enoch had gone before the tribulation. We need to get home before the tribulation because the church does not come to the tribulation. Let us read this text again and compare. See what's happening around us. Eh? We are living in a time, amen, where violence and sin and where wickedness are all around us. But we still have to continue to preach the gospel, amen, because God has souls to be saved. So that's why we are here in this pandemic or whatsoever it is. We have to preach the gospel. We have to teach the doctrine. And we have to continue uh, to baptize people in Jesus' name. Because you, the earth is filled now with false doctrine, false gods, false, false religion, here with false prophets. Everywhere you go, Jesus said, if they say, I am here, he said, go not after them. Said, because no man knows it. Then are they out? When he's coming, God bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Keep on reading this text, uh, chapter 6. You notice that I, I, I could continue because it, these are, God said in the text that his, his spirit will not always try with man because his days are 120 years. When you use that number, same thing as Moses, when he was 120 years, a type of Christ, to go up to Mount Nebo and die. You see, but to understand what that really means, I mean, 120 years, it is 120 years, if you multiply that by the raptor figure, which is 50, you should get 6,000 years. Instead of from Adam until now, 6,000 years. The rapture is about to erupt, to come, trumpet is about to sound. Let's be ready. God bless you in Jesus' name. All here tonight, in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Your deacon and sister Parker, faith, your missionary faiths. God bless you from up north. Deacon Gilbert, we pray. God bless you. And Brother Rupert, the faith, Harvest, the Bethany. The Bethany. Brother Akeem from Jamaica, God bless you. Akeem Blake, Mr. Bob Webbs, and Amen. We have just a, a faith, brother Fabian Maris, Pastor Jacobs. We have so many people. His name is Linton. So many more. I mean, and 
good hands to Shamim Bura. Well, God bless you. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. In Jesus' name. Let me say a God prayer and close. Father, we thank you. We thank you for tonight, for your words. We thank you for reminding us. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that we can go back and look up that being in the days of Noah before the flood. We know, Lord Jesus Christ, what had happened by the, the word of God, direction and almost so part of what took place uh, there in the antediluvian time. Lord Jesus, that you are coming again. You know, Lord Jesus, that it is also ahead, but I know that you're going to wrap us before the tribulation begins. And possibly, I know people you want us to be. Help us that we God Almighty follow you, obey your commandments. Do, Lord Jesus Christ, as you said we should do. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but help us, God Almighty, that we trust you and we obey. That's all the saints tonight. Everyone that is on this Zoom teaching, mighty God, I pray, Heavenly Father, your blessing rest upon them, upon them, guide them so, and keep them, Lord, in perfect peace. The minds and hearts is stayed upon you. Lord, I thank you for all those, dear God Almighty, that have been on this Zoom tonight. Oh, God Almighty, you're doing brown, Lord, we pray for him. We pray, God Almighty, for all those all over. In the name of Jesus, may your blessing rest with us tonight. And we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. And now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and our Father, faithful fellowship, communion of the Holy Ghost, the comfort, the rest, remain and abide with us all until Jesus come again. God bless you and go in peace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.